Hey guys, welcome back to our Cooktown trip. In the first episode, we took advantage of the great weather to explore the Cape Bedford headlands, and Karen found yet another shipwreck. The fishing was frustrating as we lost a few good fish to sharks. Endangered animals, apparently. So we took a break to distress on the beach next to the beautiful sands of Cape Flattery. Stress levels averted, it's time to have another crack at the fish, and hopefully this time, the sharks might leave us alone. Dropping down. Dropping down. Bunch of fishies on the sounder. Sorry? Fishies on the sounder. Yeah, there's a few here. Okay, a few good fish on this one. So we've come back this way a little. Um, we're found, finding some spots to film our live bait courses on. But while we're doing that, of course, we found a few good spots with some fish on them. So we're just going to pull up, have a few drops. See if we can get a couple on our jigs. Mackerel. No, it's all right. These mackerel are going to drive us insane. Oh, I hate these things. <laughs> these are the ones that bite our jigs off all the time. Okay. Some people like to eat them, don't they? Yeah, yeah. But to me, they're just jig-eating nuisances. Righto, Stephen's gonna have a crack. Drop him down up the front there, let it sink all the way to the bottom. Put the, let it run through your fingers, because as soon as you get to the bottom, sometimes it'll, you'll get a hit and they'll take off on you. And the, the line will take off really quick out of your fingers and then you just close the bale quickly and hit him yeah. when that happens. But once you're on the bottom, just nice little slow jigs up and then follow it back down. So there's a little bit of slack between you and the lure, like so. And if you don't feel yourself come tight back to the bottom, usually means the fish has hit you and he's come forward and swum up the line. So if you jig down and you don't feel you come tight towards the end, just wind like crazy because you've got a fish swimming at you. Yeah. I'll show you a trick. Right eh? Give him a bit of slack line, not much. Just a just a foot. Yep. And don't stay tight to him. Allow that little bit of loose line like that. To and just give him a few, um, give him 20 seconds, 30 seconds. If you feel him move or the line come tight, hit it real hard. Yeah. But just, if you don't, just let it sit for 20 or 30 seconds. And then give him a good hit because he'll sometimes be unaware. There you go, he's out. There you go, mate. <laughs> he's trying to get you back. Sometimes we get like sea wisps and all that sort of coral that come up off the bottom and they get tangled around it. It's like a big piece of cord that comes off the bottom. Loves growing in this coral isolate country. This is exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> well, best you get behind the camera there. <laughs> and everyone, everyone says, why are you puffing, mate? You need to go to the gym. Like yeah, that, but they don't real... This is different muscles, definitely. Yeah, yeah they don't realise we just caught 20 golden trevally before you caught the red, <laughs> and you're exhausted. You don't show that in the film, but... Switch hands. If you can help it, try and keep it tucked under your left arm, if you're right-handed. Yeah, I know, I know. But I've, I've got no strength for <laughs> That's all right. Can't be too far away. Here gets weaker. Yeah, there's the colour. Here he comes. Colour, colour. Yeah, a bit of colour. Might be a cod, actually. Yeah, it's Cod King. Cod King. <laughs> if it's handed his badge over. <laughs> oh no, no, you got nanny. the right colour. Nanny. It's a nanny. Yeah, yeah. I was just tricking you before. We said the. I just wanted to deflate you a little bit before you saw the real thing. <laughs> Here we you go. said. Every time we give the rod to the cameraman, they get the best fish for the day. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. Okay. Nice. Ooh. That's a largemouth nanny guy. First nanny. Nice. Largemouth nanny on our green jig for Stephen. It's one of the most predominant fish in these sort of areas. 
Okay, get these hooks out. I've already treated him for barotrauma. There he goes. Steven, how was that? How was your nanny guy? The nanny guy was just crazy. The biggest fish I've ever caught. So how's a big, how big a fish have you caught before? I mean, the last one was also with Ryan, the bearer. Oh, uh, yeah. Not too long ago in, uh, on Hinchinbrook or close to Hinchinbrook. But before that, before it started working with Bef us? Before that, my biggest one was like, um, I think, yeah, like that, that big. Okay. <laughs> like 30 centimeters, kind of. So what surprised you? Because you kept saying, oh my God, it pulls, it pulls, it pulls. <laughs> my arms are getting sore. I see Ryan through that through that camera all the time, pulling and, and breathing, and I'm like, it can't be so bad. And I'm, you know, I'm regularly, I'm regularly going to the gym, and felt like, you know, this, you know, it can't be that bad. But I was so sore. <laughs> I was so sore. And and on a jig too. How did it hit? Um, surprisingly hard. Surprisingly hard. I mean, um, it got. I mean, the 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 more I pulled, the weaker it got. Um, you know, that, I think. That's and then the weaker kind of, you got. And <laughs> the weaker I got. But I had more stamina, as it seems. Ryan so, thought he was going to have to take over. Uh, yeah, he helped me a lot, honestly. He helped me a lot. You know, also, if, even if it was a retrieve in the end, um, like he did. That was good, the first he, time you've picked a big fish up, too. Ryan showed. Uh, Stephen had to do it. He goes, yeah, I want to pick it up and um, yeah. oh, it's all a big learning curve for everybody getting into it And that's why we did the courses as well. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, you're a very good teacher. Honestly <laughs> No, like a in the naughty corner <laughs> <laughs> No, thank you for that experience. It's it's awesome. Like, no worries mate. fish like that in my head is like ah yeah. Damn. Well, it was a delight Beauty. to watch. Plenty more we to come. always love watching people that haven't caught a big fish before. Struggle with catching a big fish. Because like 30 years on charter, that's really what you loved most, wasn't it? Was yeah. just watching people catch big fish. And so. their knees shaking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I will sleep well tonight, or not, maybe not, not on this side. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, congratulations, mate, on your first nanny. And um, yeah, we'll head out. Plenty more to come, Plenty hopefully. To come. That's it. This is a challenge. This is the, <laughs> this is the bait fish challenge. I'm going to see if I can get this fish up. Got like 10 pound line as a leader and tiny little hooks. Hopefully they're in the bait fish. But trouble is, the 10 pound line's not much of a leader. So I'll back the drag off a little. See if I can get this up. It's going to be a while. <laughs> <laughs> could be a gold spot kite, could be a nanny guy. Anyway, we'll see. I'll have to spin the boat around because it's going under the boat. Come on, settle down. All that line's gone now. <laughs> He's probably got a shark up here. Do you want me to chase him? It's all right. He's going to spool you. Gone. Gone. Yeah, he wore through the leader. Or a shark ate him, one or the other. That's very possible these days with the amount of whalers out here. Oh, I'm down to two jigs. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Honey bunny. We have to get the umbrella out. I'm dying of heat exhaustion. Really? Yes. You can't suck it up for five more minutes? No, I can't suck it up for five more minutes. <laughs> because I'm exhausted and it's so hot and I really want a canopy on this boat and you won't let me have one and the umbrella is the compromise. All right, let's drag it out. Look at this shit. Oh, apart. oh, where's the tube? It's in, in here. It? It's in here. Okay, I've got him. Don't drop the tube overboard. We have lost one tube overboard. We've lost a whole umbrella overboard, actually. That was my fault. The wind was blowing and it Mary Poppins up and away. <laughs> Perfect Sunk umbrella like a too. rock. Whoops, watch your eyes. How's that? It's all over here, the shade. That's all right. That's what I mean, you can't get it. It's all right, it's better than nothing. Last umbrella, it was windy. We put it in the slot 
I went with my friend Peter, Ryan wasn't on board, it was bouncing up and down in the wind and we thought we should tie a rope onto that umbrella because it's going to fly away and as we said that it ripped out of the slot took off <laughs> like Mary Poppins <laughs> landed in the drink before we could go down and get it go around and get it it sank and it was the perfect size umbrella for this boat and since then we've got another umbrella but it's uh, a little bit too big and awkward but uh, it's so good having an umbrella in the heat in an open boat but what would be a better solution a better solution would be a canopy <laughs> but <laughs> but Ryan won't let us have a canopy for some strange reason he thinks it will get in the way of his fishing so we all have to bake in the sun instead in summer in summer and it is really hot and you get really fried mm. first day is not so bad but after the second and the third day it's so hot sometimes I don't even want to go with the boat it's too hot we need a canopy yeah what not survivor tip if you have cracked heels and you can't get to civilization, you can rub it with pumice. Underwater volcanic eruptions, I think, is where it comes from. But it's like rock and uh, it washes up on the beach sometimes in big quantities, like, you know, a foot thick. Pumice stone might be the ash and that's solidifying once it hits the water or the smaller sprays and bits and pieces. I don't know. It's... Oh. I had heard it was from volcanic eruptions. It is, yeah, it's it's from, very light, very It's bubbly. from volcanic eruptions, but I don't know Floats. if it's the lava. The upper lava was heavier. It would be rock. It to rock, but mm. which part this is, I'm not sure. Maybe that's the fart before the poo. <laughs> I'm such a boy. Sorry. Oh, sea snake. <laughs> sea snake, look. Oh, isn't he beautiful? Wasn't he pretty? He was so white. He was very white, wasn't he? He was like Normally an Normally they're like... A uh, light brownie colour. He was stunningly beautiful. He saw the boat, he was like, put his head up. Hello. So we are f filming our locating livings course, and Ryan's talking about one of the modules is you can fish on them as well while you're catching your bait. We're having the opposite problem. <laughs> we can't we, catch the we bait. We can't catch the bait because the fish keep taking it. We've already got carted off halfway to Timbuktu. First and time. First time. Second yeah. drop. Now, uh, it's something a lot smaller. There I think it is. the first time the bait went through the. Oh, it's a feral hooked queenie. Oh. <laughs> no wonder. Look at that. Sorry, queenie, we dragged him up backwards. Just those plies. Yep. Now, try not to lose any more of our little hooks. Well, there goes another bait jig. <laughs> jig number three. Bait jig number three. We keep getting monsters. <laughs> right, we've still got a good bait under us. Let's drop down and see if we can get some bait up this time without it getting smashed. Yeah. That can be an issue at times. So some of these are worth fishing on because they have good fish on them, not just bait. You're just the fish whisperer, baby. You just keep catching big fish, you can't help it. I, you just got to catch little ones this time. I know. I know, sometimes you get caught. Normally it's so bloody easy. Sometimes you do get caught in the aquarium, don't you? The nursery. <laughs> nursery. You catch 10 little little ones like this, but not very often. No. Not very often. Well, something found a chunk of lead a little bit more appealing than the bait jigs. Anyway, put another sinker on. Okay, second drop. Another couple of liveys, I think. Not a full house. Sometimes you will get a full house, which is great. Oh, no, not again. I think the livey's been eaten by a queenie or a trevally, and now the queenie or trevally's been eaten by a cod or a shark. <laughs> Talk about the circle of life. All I want to do is film some live bait. <laughs> Come on, let go. Unbelievable. All right. I think we've got too many small queenies here. They're just eating all the bait on the way up. Might just give it one more try. What do you reckon? All right, one more drop. See if we can get some more chub mackerel. Uh, all the liveys are getting eaten. Look, I've got more liveys on there. You watch. Eating every time. Man, 
This is insane. Look at that. We can't film here. We can't do any more here. Let's put the jigs out and have a fish. Yeah, you're on. You got him. Into him. Get him out of the bottom. <laughs> you got him. Man, smashed it. How's that lighter rod working for you? Much better. Much better? Well, because I've got a bad shoulder. Yeah, I know. I don't think it's a particularly big fish. They love going under the boat, don't they? Shit. Watch out for the electric. Oh, what the f he just got eaten. Damn! Bloody hell. Damn that. Sharks are insane. Good on you, Queensland fisheries. Great move, 12 he's years ago. He's a little bit of a bitter about the uh, shark depredation issue. It's called fisheries mismanagement. Okay, well, we've had enough of the sharks. Plus the Northwesterly is making the fishing very difficult. Got a few nice ones, but overall it's been a bit of a tough day. So we're going to uh, spend the afternoon just trolling back along the headlands, see what we can pick up. Maybe a finger mark, maybe a trout. And uh, might have a swim behind Cape Bedford and head home. What do you reckon? Sounds like a plan. Let's do it. Job, hold the rod and stay in the shade. That's it. Keep the rod tip down. No, no I think a I've got fish. a fish. Oh, this overhead, honey. <laughs> Why have you given me an overhead? That's okay, I'll set the spin rod up. <laughs> You've got an overhead at home. You've used them before. I know, but I don't really like using it because my bad arm. You've only got a guppy. Shaking his little head though. Be a, be a mackerel or something probably. Come on, little fella. Be nice if it was an eating size finger mark. We could have him for dinner. I don't think this is a finger mark. I think Not. it's probably a trevally or a something small. But you're one up on me. I am. Stephen's one up on you too, actually. Oh, a little golden. My nemesis. <laughs> We've seen enough of those oh at Princess my... Charlotte Bay. They were huge. It would take 20 minutes to wind it in. You can't get to the reds and other fish because of them. The finger mark. They're just such a tenacious I mean, fighter. It's, they're good fun, but sometimes they just get a little bit oh. too much, don't they? Yeah. And have you ever tried to eat one? I mean, what do they taste like? We ate one years ago, a smaller one. It was quite reasonable, actually. Really? Yeah. But most people let them go. It was sport fish. You're spoilt. Well, we are a little bit spoilt, yeah. You don't even eat barramundi. <laughs> well, it's better eating fish than barramundi. There is. Come on, little mate. There we go. Too tired. Nice little golden. I'm letting go in the water, eh? There we go. Let's keep going. Off he goes. Trolling the headlands. Good sport for kids, actually, wouldn't it? It is, yeah. It's good. Or anyone who wants to sit back and have a beer or a... Sit in the shade. Relaxing, sh yeah. Yeah. Well, that wasn't too successful today. The trolling there at the end was a bit quiet. We got a golden trevally and a couple of touches, but a lot of the spots where I'm traditionally seeing always come to catch my fish, it's just not much there today. Mm. At Northwesterly early in the day, um, didn't do us a world of good shut everything down, but got a few nannies and bits and pieces. Um, had, had a good swim. Beautiful swim at that cave. The found another wreck. Found another wreck. <laughs> uh, and caught, we didn't catch the right fish. We caught, we were oh. chasing bait for our locating liveys course and he kept catching bigger fish on the bait jigs and losing them. Oh, there was a lot of queenies and so. trevallies eating the bait jigs on us, so that didn't work out too well for us in a few spots. <laughs> Went through a few bait jigs, but anyway, we got a bit of content for our live bait course. Yes, we did. So we'll and head we back. had a really great day. Yeah. I uh, had a marvellous day. The swimming uh, was fantastic. Really enjoyed it. So we'll head back, Scenery. get ready for dinner, get the boat ready for tomorrow, and we might head offshore and see if we can catch a few different species on our jigs. What do yeah, you reckon? That'd be good. And what, what we have to do though too, is we've got to take the four wheel drive and go for a look where the, uh, we saw 
Cape with Bedford. the drone, yeah. with a car. So we need to go exploring there. So we might lots even do of things that, yeah. to fit in to our <laughs> Cooktown uh, short trip. As usual, we bite off more than we can chew. We do. We get home and need three days off to recover. That's it. <laughs> old decrepit people we are. Okay guys, if you like this video and you'd like to see more, subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Insta and Facebook, and if you only want some special tips we send out by email only, head on over to our website, rhymemediafishing.com, and sign up for free email updates. Get into the great outdoors. Keep fishing smarter. And see you next time. <laughs>